Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author, Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today, the Manifest telecast will be a little bit different than what you've seen the past 14 years. We're here in the city of Jerusalem. This is the final day of our tour group being here. But most of our preaching and teaching, as you know, that comes from the Holy Land deals with prophecy, Bible prophecy, the last days, the coming of the Lord, and also spiritual warfare, the Hebraic roots of Christianity, faith, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who have kept up with our ministry and followed our ministry for many years are familiar with the fact that prophecy has been a premier teaching of ours for quite some time under the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Also, if you follow us in our conferences and conference gatherings and special events, we do a mix of the prophetic word plus also practical teaching on how to walk with God. But today, I want to do something a little different. Most of you know that in North America that we do a lot of teaching on the Manifest Telecast and in our conferences dealing with American prophecy, the future of the United States, and how our patterns are similar to the ancient Roman Empire and our spiritual patterns are similar to the nation of Israel. Today's program, however, is to address the nations outside of the United States of America. Many of you may not be aware of the fact that your nation is mentioned in prophecy. You may not be aware of this, so for the next few moments, let me just talk about the nations in prophecy. First of all, when you read the Bible, it gives us some great teaching about what's going to happen in the future. When you go to the book of Isaiah, he has several chapters in the early part of his scroll or the early part of his book that predicts certain things that's going to happen in certain nations. Did you know, for example, in Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 1, there's a prediction that the city of Damascus is going to be utterly destroyed. It's going to happen sometime at the end of days. I'm not going to speculate how it could happen, but for example, if the group called ISIS would ever get a hold of the city of Damascus and take it over and try to use chemical or biological weapons, that would be the end of the city of Damascus. That's only one speculation or possibility. We do know, however, the Bible teaches that. We also know from Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, Persia, will be involved in an end time war connected to attacking the northern part of Israel. And also they will be involved in an attack that will come from the Jordanian side, right across from the city of Jericho in an area called the Valley of the Passengers on the east of the sea. Persia today is the country of Iran. And the Shia Muslims and the present leaders in Iran are very anti-Semitic and have a great hatred for Israel. They've also called for the destruction of the Jewish state. However, the prophet predicted that in the war of Gog and Magog, Persia will be one of those nations that their armies will be decimated in a future war. Many of the Persians or the Iranian people are not aware of that fact. What is interesting is when you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you'll discover that Syria and Egypt are not mentioned in that future attack of the war of Gog and Magog. God does say some interesting things in Isaiah about the country of Egypt. It does mention that Egypt would have an internal civil war. Some people believe that what e Egypt has recently gone through is a portion of the fulfillment of that prophecy. It talks about the trouble that would be in the Nile River and how the Nile River would eventually dry up, how there would be a civil internal war, and in the future, and this will be in a time called the Great Tribulation, the coming Antichrist will take over the northern part of Africa, which would include Egypt. It would also include the country of Ethiopia, and it would include the country of Libya. Oddly enough, Egypt and Libya have had a civil uprising. They've had their leaders, former leaders, removed. Yet they are nations of Bible prophecy. So the northern horn of Africa is going to be greatly involved in the near future. There's also predictions in the Bible about Lebanon. Lebanon will be one of those nations that in the future, when the Antichrist comes to power, he will move out of the area of Iraq and Syria and move his armies into Lebanon, and there will be an invasion from the north country into the nation of Israel. Now, there's no doubt everybody knows this, that Israel is a part of last day prophecy. But I want to talk to the people that may be uh, Palestinian, that live in the West Bank, perhaps Gaza, uh, the ancient area of Judea and Samaria, because I realize that you're involved in a process that's very interesting. 
For example, most of the people who live inside what we call today the modern nation of Israel consider themselves either Jews or they consider themselves Palestinians. Now, Palestinian people are either Arab Christian or they are Muslim. That's predominantly the two groups that live here. But I will tell you this, that there are people inside of Israel or inside of the West Bank or Gaza that have called for the destruction of the Jewish state. They've called for the destruction of Israel. You have to understand something based on the prophecy of Ezekiel. Ezekiel says in his writing that there would come a day that there would be people that would try to form two nations within this nation. And there would be people that would sit in tables and they would deceive one another in their peace negotiations in order to try to lie about getting this land. And the Bible said that this group of people would even say the ancient high places are ours. The ancient high places in Ezekiel's day would be Judea and Samaria or what is today called the West Bank. So when you see today some of the Palestinian people, in fact, all of them that are calling for a Palestinian state, the prophet Ezekiel predicted that this was going to happen. He also predicted there would be great turmoil that would be a result of people in the last days trying to create a state within the state. Now, according to the Bible, and I want to make this clear, whether you're Palestinian or Muslim or Arab Christian, you live in the Middle East, whether you're an Arab living in a, a nation outside of uh, what they call the Palestinian territories in Israel, whether you're an Egyptian, maybe you're a Saudi, I'm talking specifically of those living in the Middle East. Please understand that this book is a book of prophecy. One third of the Bible, both Old and New Testament combined, is prophecy. There's 318 predictions about the return of Jesus Christ just in the New Testament alone. But this book makes it very clear. Number one, that Israel would be a nation in the last days, Isaiah 66. Number two, the prophecies make it clear that Jerusalem would be the capital of Israel in the last days, Psalms 102, verse 16. The Bible also makes it clear that the Jewish people, Jeremiah chapter 16, for example, would return from all the nations of the world back to the land of Israel. All of this has happened since 1948. However, in the future, the Bible makes it clear that there's going to be some great trouble that's going to happen in the land, that men are going to fight over dividing this land. Daniel the prophet talked about this. But here's what I want all of you, whatever religious religion you believe in, here's what I want you to understand. The nation of Israel is not going anywhere. It is impossible for, for anyone, whether they be a terrorist organization, a radical organization that doesn't like Jewish people, or a nation that doesn't even exist in the Middle East, maybe a nation from the North Country, because the trouble always came to Israel from the North Country. You need to understand this. This book, divinely inspired of, inspired of God, has already predicted Israel will exist in the end of days. Yes, they'll go through great turmoil and great trouble. They'll go through a time of great tribulation. But this book indicates you will never, ever remove them from the land again. It is absolutely impossible. Why? God promised the seed of Abraham through Isaac a land in the Middle East that would be renamed Israel at the end of days. I want to suggest this to you based on what God himself has already established. It would be better to seek peace with your brothers and sisters because you understand the Arab people and the Jewish people, you're actually cousins. I know most of you know this. You all came out of Abraham. One group of you, the Jewish branch, came through Isaac, who was the son of Sarah. The Arab group, uh, came through uh, Ishmael, through Hagar, who was a wife of Abraham. Both of you came out of the seed of Abraham. Both of you, whether you be Arab or whether you be Jew, you have Abraham as your father. Now, we do know that there's always family feuds. Look, we've had them in America. All the way back in the time of the United States when the Indians controlled territory and we did a terrible thing by forcing the Indians to leave their land and go on a trail of tears and go all the way to Oklahoma. That was evil and that was wrong. And America pays a price for the things that we've done in the past. Even our Civil War where the North fought the South over slavery. Thank God the slaves were liberated through Abraham Lincoln and through the Emancipation Proclamation that he made. But America's hands have been stained with blood. And we cannot brag on what a great nation we are when we have to understand that in our past, we have mistreated people, whether it be the Cherokee, the Navajo, or the Indian tribes, that some of them live in utter total poverty in the Midwestern part of the United States, or whether it be the black African-American community, that some of their founders, their fathers, I should say, their ancestors were mistreated in slavery. America, through the Christian faith, 
has tried to make things right. We have exposed the error that we did to the Indian, and we've called for repentance. We've called for the error that we made during the time of slavery, and we've called for racism to be stopped. It's time for it to be annihilated and for it to end. There are some people, however, that don't have this faith. They don't have faith in the Word. They don't have a covenant with the Lord, so they have no love in their heart. I would say this to the seed of Abraham, whether you be Jewish or whether you be Arab, Please understand, I, I do understand that the Jews believe in the five books of Moses. If they're devout Jews, they believe in the Torah, especially the Orthodox Jews. The other Jews that may be more Reformed Jews or not ultra-Orthodox, but simply of Jewish faith, they believe in the Torah and they believe perhaps in the prophets and the Psalms. Christians, however, and if they are devout Christians who believe in God and have a covenant with Christ, we believe in the 66 books of the Bible, which are the Old Testament and the New Testament together. And we do understand something, and that is this, that God wants people to make peace. He wants you to be at peace with your brother. I'm going to make a statement here in my observation of coming to the Holy Land for over 32 years. I've gone into the heart of the West Bank of ancient Judea and Samaria. I've been to Shechem. I've been to uh, ancient Samaria. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. I've been to Ramallah. I've been to Nablus. I've been here to Jerusalem. I've been to Arab East Jerusalem. I have a lot of Arab friends here in Israel. I have a lot of Muslim friends in Israel, Jewish friends as well. I want to say something to you. I've traveled this land, and I can tell you that there are millions of people who would love to come to the Holy Land. You know, I would like to personally see the city of Damascus because of the history of it. I would love to go to the country of Iraq, but because of the terrorism that's involved in those particular places, it becomes practically impossible for anyone to go there. The history of Iraq goes all the way back to the time of Abraham. It would be a wonderful place to visit. And if these nations, and I speak even of Israel, I speak of Lebanon, a beautiful country of Lebanon, uh, even, even Egypt, if these nations could understand, if you good people, people who want peace, would rise up against the terrorists, would rise up against these wicked men that are trying to use you as a pawn on the chessboard, they use you and they use your children to be suicide bombers. If you would raise up against these people and say, we want to have peace, do you understand the millions of people that would come to this part of the world and everybody would have a job, everybody could be working on the farm, everybody would be making money, everybody would have prosperity. The prosperity that would come to this part of the world would absolutely be incredible. Now, there may be those of you that says, yes, but Perry, aren't we living in the last days? We sure are. But also remember, as the days of Noah were, they're going to be eating, drinking, planting, building, reaping, sowing, and harvesting. So there will be a realm of prosperity at the end of days. See, I realize something. I realize that the conflict that's happening in this part of the world, we say it's land for peace. In reality, it's not so much land for peace. It's a religious battle. It's a battle between two different ideologies. One group says it belongs, the land belongs to us, and another group says, no, the land belongs to us. And there's two different beliefs. I'll give you an example. Directly behind me here is what's called the Temple Mount platform, the Haram al-Sharif, according to the Arabs and the Muslims. This area is the most controversial 35 acres on the planet. Right above the walls of the old city where the Dome of the Rock and the al Aska mosque, mosque sits, that's sacred to the Muslim religion. But you know what? It's also sacred to Judaism because in Genesis 22, that's the mountain where Abraham offered Isaac. It's also sacred to the Jewish people because according to Scripture a thousand years ago, Solomon built this magnificent temple there. It was destroyed by the Babylonians, and Ezra and Nehemiah came back to this site, rebuilt another temple, and in the days of Herod the Great, Herod expanded onto the Temple Mount platform. He, he added on to the southern wall. He built up a wall today called the Western Wall, where he built the platform up. He expanded. That's where the Jewish people worshiped until 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. Back behind me is also sacred to Christians. Jesus Christ was he lived here. He ministered here for 42 months. And then the Bible tells us that he was crucified, he was buried, and by the power of God, he was raised from the dead. And right over to my left is the Mount of Olives where he ascended and where the prophets have said he will come back again. The reason I'm sharing this with you is this is a city with three religions, Islam and Judaism and Christianity. Now, the amazing thing to me is the Christians who desire peace, the Jews who desire peace, and the Muslims who desire peace, and the Arab Christians who desire peace, when you come into the city, it really, the peace of God can be felt here. I've been here 32 times. I've never had a fear of going to Jerusalem. I've never had a fear of walking through the streets at night through one of the great gates that stays open. 
I've never had a fear of taking my tour group anywhere. I know there's conflicts here, but you know, look, you know what? New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, there's murders every night. There's drug crimes every night. There's shootings every night in our cities of America. So of course there's going to be activity here. Jerusalem is a city. But what city do you know that five and six year old kids will walk hand in hand with backpacks on their back away from home down the street to go to school without ever being molested? It happens right here in the city. You seldom have ever hear of a child being kidnapped by anybody. But in America, are you kidding me? You would put your five year old not just at a bus stop, but to walk to school and believe that for a year's time, some pervert wouldn't molest them. I'm telling you, this is where we're at right now prophetically. This is a city of three religions. Now, I see people here who want peace. And the people who want peace watch millions of tourists come to this nation and come to tour of this city, the place where Jesus walked, the place where the prophets walked, and the place of the Bible. Six million, seven million perhaps a year. I want to say this to the good people who are Jewish, to the people who are Arab Christians, and the people who are Palestinians living in the territories. If you will unite together, and I know politicians cause more problems than they do help. I've often said if we could get 70 businessmen out of the West Bank and Gaza, out of Israel, and just put 70 men over a council to run, run these nations, it's like America. I said sometimes if we could just get rid of the House and Senate, please forgive me for saying this, and put a bunch of people from the cities who are business people, we'd solve the, the national debt. We would solve the problems by putting business people in instead of lawyers and politicians. Well, in this country, there are good leaders on both sides. But I've often said, put the common people and let them make decisions, and it wouldn't be long that you could have peace here. I'm just trying to say something to you. There's a lot of battles going on here, and it's over religion. You and I know that. It's over, is this book called the Holy Bible really the God's Word, and can it be trusted? Or the five books of Moses that you see in a Torah scroll. Is it really God's Word, and can it be trusted? or to the Muslims who have the Quran and the Hadith, who they believe that's the last word that God gave on earth. Is that the final word of God and can it be trusted? I would suggest this to all of you watching me. I'm not a Christian because my family was Christian. I'm a Christian because when I was a young man, the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart and convicted me and my faith became alive in Christ. That's why I'm a Christian. I'm not a Christian because my dad was a pastor. I had no intention of going in the ministry. God put me in the ministry when I was a young man at an all night prayer meeting at 16 years of age. But I will tell you this, see this book, it's called the Holy Bible, 66 books in it. And, and or, let me just say this to you. If you look at the entirety of this book with the 66 books that are there, it's covenant. It's old covenant or first covenant and new covenant under the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what this book is about. It's a book that reveals to you how God brought Jesus Christ into the earth to redeem you of your sin and guarantee you access to heaven. What religion do you know of that can absolutely perfectly guarantee you access to heaven? I have Jewish friends of mine that are devout Jews. They study the Torah, they attend synagogue. But they've come to me in private and they say, Perry, I really don't know if this is what's gonna get me to heaven. I've had Muslim friends come to me and they say, I'm a Muslim. I've studied the Hadith and the Quran. I said, how do you know you're going to make it to heaven? They say, well, we're just going to have to be judged one day by the Lord. If we've done the right thing, we'll make it there. This is what makes this book and this teaching about Christ different than any other religion. A guarantee that you can make it to heaven. Because see, we've all been born into sin, whether we want to admit that or not. The only way to get the death sentence off of you, the only way to avoid hell, because I know devout Jews and Christians and Muslims all believe there's a hell. They, if they're devout, in their religion. They believe in angels. They believe in demons. They believe in Satan. They believe there's one God. But the only way to get the sin nature off of you is to accept Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And see, I know some people don't understand that. They would say, why would God send his son to die on the cross? It doesn't make sense. I know. You know what Paul said? The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who don't believe in it. But to us that believe, it's the power of God unto salvation to all that would believe. Now, this is what I'm going to suggest to you. I'm not interested in trying to make you believe like I do. I simply want to be the messenger of God to come to you with the Word. Wherever you're watching me right now, maybe it's on a computer, a laptop, maybe it's uh, on one of the major networks, maybe it's on a satellite. I want you, not in front of anybody, but let's say you go to bed tonight. I want you to lie down in your bed and I want you to ask God something because a lot of you believe in God. I want you to say, God, that man just told me a moment ago about Jesus. 
God, if Jesus is real the, man, the way this man has taught, I want him to visit me. I want to feel him in my heart. Let me know, is this Jesus real? Is he really the Savior? There are people all over the world that are having dreams of Jesus, visions of Jesus, visitations from him. And I believe if you approach God, the God in heaven with an open heart and ask him, did you really send Jesus to redeem me? God is going to answer you, either sending a messenger to you, someone to witness to you about the Lord, giving you a Bible that you can read to understand these things better, or maybe just visiting you at night. I've received letters from people all over the world that God visited them and he revealed himself to them. It's a sin issue. That's what it is. You can go to heaven if you're sick sometimes. I mean, many people die sick that are believers. You can't go to heaven being a sinner. The only way to get sin out of your life is to say, Jesus, come into my life and in my heart and wash my sins away. Something really happens. I can't explain it. Your nature changes. The feelings you have inside change. All the junk that's on the inside of you changes. So, Father, I'm going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you in the name of Christ to visit every person watching me right now. There may be people, God, that are hard-hearted. There may be people, God, that are totally wicked in their heart. There may be people that are mean and they have mean plans for people. But let the Lord, like he did to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, visit every person in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now, if you've prayed a sinner's prayer, you can go to our website and say, you know what, tell Perry I prayed with him. If God visits you, tell me. If Jesus gives you a vision, you tell me. You contact me and tell me. You know why? Because I run and rejoice with you. This was my special message for those of you who say, I want to know the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I know he is because of the joy he gives you when you receive him. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home or your apartment, wherever you live, and share this word with you. I always have an offer for those in North America to help us stay on the air with Manifest. I'm coming with the offer plus some information at the end. From the city of Jerusalem, this is Perry Stone saying, we love you. That's why we take the time to bring this program to you every single week. Perry Stone is now making available his newest book, This Season of Angels. In this study, Perry will answer the following questions. How can I discern if an angel is present? Why do angels appear in dreams and yet look like men and not angels with wings? Early Christians taught there is an angel of healing. What is his name? When a loved one dies, does a death angel enter their room and remove their spirit? How do angels help me battle demonic activity attacking my family? What is the biblical basis for asking angels to help reach my unsaved family members? These and many more questions are answered in Perry Stone's newest landmark book, This Season of Angels. Discover how global prophetic activity increases angelic activity in the last days through visions and dreams. Learn from Genesis 19 about how angels at times can appear in human form. Perry also answers 21 questions about angels, including biblical evidence that at times animals can see or sense an angel, and how parents can pray and ask God for angels to guard and protect children. This hardcover 207-page book contains 12 dynamic chapters that explore fascinating truths that will enlighten your understanding on the subject of angels. When you order this book, Perry is including a new two audio CD teaching set, Defeating Satan's Toughest Attacks. Perry will reveal how to deal with depression, oppression, and suicidal thoughts, and how to defeat the spirit of the double curse. Order the new book and audio CD set online at perrystone.org or call the toll-free number 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323 and ask for offer number ANG131. You may also send a donation of $30 or more and request offer ANG131. The address is Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Well, thank you for joining me today on the Manifest Telecast. This will be your final opportunity to get the book and the audio CD series on the Manifest Telecast. Now, the book is available in 
bookstores, and you can go into a bookstore and get that. But if you order through us, you do get the album included in that. And we just hope that it will be a blessing to you because I want to tell you something, that angels are going to be released heavier, more intently during prophetic seasons. And we're going to prove that to you in this book. And those 12 chapters are just all sorts of subjects that I think are going to interest you. And uh, when God touches you, because God's going to heal some of you with a healing angel, I believe that. And, and, and let us know. Contact us or send us an email. We love to hear from you, especially when we know that God has touched your life in some way. Now, this is a very special season, as most of you know, for those who are Jewish or Messianic Jews. And sometimes people that are not Messianic, they honor or celebrate the Hanukkah season. So happy Hanukkah to, the, to our Jewish friends and also to our Messianic Jewish friends. And God bless you in this season as we remember the light of the world uh, is our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, let me just mention to you that for those of you that celebrate what we call the traditional holiday, the tr traditional Christmas, a Merry Christmas to you. And uh, we just pray that you will spend time with your family. To me, these seasons, because honestly, having researched this in detail, Jesus was probably born during the fall months around the Feast of Tabernacles. But if you go back nine months, he was conceived around December 24th, 25th, and it falls into the nine month period. So uh, his conception would have possibly been around this time of the year. So, uh, you know, when a child is born, we usually mark the birthday as the day when they come out of the womb. But if, if life begins at conception, Jesus was conceived uh, at this time of the year. And he is the light of the world, no doubt. But anyway, without getting any, any, any theological uh, uh, discourses on that, we just pray that you'll have a blessed season because this is a time of the year to remember those who have gone to be with the Lord that we loved and we've enjoyed their time together. My daddy's gone. My grandparents are gone. I have great memories, however, of this time of the year at their house in Davis, West Virginia, and uh, our grandparent Stone as well when we'd go up there to Davie, West Virginia. But uh, I hope you'll get to spend time with your family. Take time. Don't get too busy to spend time with your family. Have a meal together. Sit down and just talk about the Lord and how good He is and uh, fellowship one with another. I have a grandbaby, and I think I, I've, I've said nothing about my grandbaby on the Manifest telecast for all these months because I wanted to get a picture of her when she got a little older. So we're going to throw a picture up. My son will give me a picture of our grandbaby. This is Johanna Galilee Stone. And uh, she is, of course, the prettiest baby the Lord ever made. We know that. And I know you can tell by the <laughs> I tease grandparents. I said, I've been looking at your grandbaby's pictures for 40 years. Now you're going to have to look at mine. So we just want to do that one time. We're going to show our beautiful grandbaby. We're proud of our son. The enemy really tried to kill my son when he was younger, but he didn't succeed. And now he's a father and it's just a wonderful feeling. And I ask people for years, when you're a grandparent, what makes it so special? And so I now know what it is. You don't feel the heavy weight of of the, the daily cares of dealing with the child. You just get to go and have fun with them and take them back to the mom and dad. I found out that's the key to everybody loving to be a grandparent. But anyway, uh, God bless you. And, and I want to pray for you. Father, in this season, there will be people that will be very lonely during this time. But I'm asking you, God, to bless and honor the men and women who have been so faithful to you this, this year and give them a time together. Release them from depression and oppression and fear and all the things that the enemy would bring and bring peace, righteousness, and joy to their life. We honor you, Lord, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We give you all of the praise and the glory for what you're going to do in this upcoming year. In Jesus' name. Now, next week on Manifest are going to be some programs from the main event, excerpts from the main event, and I'll give you an opportunity to get those albums. See you next week on Manifest.